Welcome. Let's discuss how we can find the domain of function compositions. A strategy that we can use to find the domain of a composition is to first find the domain of the inside function. And then find the domain of the composition. And then we're going to see where both domains overlap. So now let's apply this strategy in the following example. So here we have two functions, f of x, which has been defined as 4 divided by x plus 2, and g of x, which is defined as 1 over x. And what we're interested in is to find the domain of the composition of g into f. So following this notation, we will get the function of g, and then we're going to substitute it inside the function of f. So let's start by finding the domain of the inside function, which in this case, the inside function is g of x. That's the function that we will plug inside of it. The domain are all the x values that we are allowed to use. But notice that the variable of x, it's in the denominator. We can never divide by zero. Therefore, x equals zero. It's not in our domain. we are allowed to use any other x value that is not zero. So we can say that the domain are all the x values except zero. From negative infinity to zero, not including zero, union, zero to positive infinity. Now let's find the domain of the composition, or what I'm referring to as both functions. If we get the function of g and we substitute it inside of f, we will get the expression of 1 over x, and we will substitute it into any variable into f. So we will end up with the expression of 4 divided by 1 over x plus 2. Now let's concentrate on the denominator of this fraction. Let's try to write the denominator in one single expression. To do that, notice that in one fraction, the denominator is x, so let's make this second term also have a denominator of x. Let's multiply by x over x. So now notice that in the denominator, they both have a denominator of x. Now we can combine them. So notice that now we are dividing by a whole fraction. Instead of doing that, let's get the numerator, which is 4. And let's multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator, which in this case is going to be x on the numerator and 1 minus 2x on the denominator. If we perform that multiplication, we will obtain 4x on the numerator and 1 plus 2x on the denominator. So let me raise all my work to give me some space and let's just keep the result. So now that we have found the result of the composition, now let's try to find the domain of this new function. Let's look at the denominator since we have a fraction. We know that the denominator can never be zero. So let's find that value that will make it zero. Let's set the denominator equal to zero. We could take away one from both sides and then we can divide by two. So the only value that will make the denominator equal to zero is negative one half. So now we can say that the domain is all x values except negative one half. From negative infinity to negative one half, a union, negative one half to positive infinity. Now that we have found the domain of the inside function and the domain of the composition, now let's see where both of these domains overlap. So let's start by drawing a number line. And in this number line, let's place the domain of the inside function. All values except zero. And in this same number line, now let's place the domain when we compose both functions. All x values except negative one half. 
Now that we have both domains in the same number line, let's see where they overlap. If we move from left to right, notice that they're overlapping in all this region. But once we get to the value of negative one half, they are not overlapping. The pink domain is not using negative one half and the green domain does. They are not overlapping. Where else do they overlap? They also overlap at the interval from negative one half to zero. Once I get to zero, notice that they're not overlapping. Zero is not being used on the green. It is used in pink. They are not overlapping. And then in addition, also notice that we keep reading from left to right. They are overlapping in all the values on the right hand side of zero. And these three regions where they are overlapping, this is the domain of the function composition. Negative infinity to negative one half. Union. Negative one half to zero. Union. Zero to positive infinity. Let's take a look at one more example. So now let's consider the function of f of x as x squared plus 3 and the function of g of x as the square root of 4 minus x. And what we want to do, we want to define the domain of the function composition of g inside of f. Here we're getting the function of g and we are substituting it inside the function of f. So my inside function is going to be g of x. Let's start by finding the domain of g of x. g of x has been defined as the square root, and there is one restriction. We can never have negatives inside the square root. So to find the domain of g of x, let's figure out when the inside of the square root is positive. We want to figure out when 4 minus x is greater or equal than 0. So let's start by moving 4 to the, to the right-hand side. And then let's divide by negative 1. But remember that when you divide by a negative number, the direction of the inequality is switches direction. It was facing to the right, and after the division of a negative, it is facing to the left. So we have our domain. The domain is any x value that is less than 4. Any x value that is less than 4 we are guaranteed to have positives inside the square root. From negative infinity to positive 4, including 4. And we have to include the value of 4 because notice that when we substitute it inside the square root, we are going to get 4 minus 4, which is 0, and it's okay to have the square root of 0. Now let's define the composition and find the domain of that. Let's get the function of g and let's substitute it inside of f. So here we have the function of g and now let's substitute it into the only variable of f. So now we're going to obtain the result of the square root of 4 minus x is raised to the second plus 3. The square root will cancel out with the second exponent. And then if we simplify this expression we have negative x plus 7. But notice that this equation that we obtain, it is a line. And if it's a line, we are allowed to use every single x value. There is no restrictions in a line. So the domain, it's every single x value. So we can claim that the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's try to see where both domains overlap. Let's start by drawing our number line. And let's place the domain of the inside function from negative infinity to positive 4. So let's place on the value of 4. Let's have it here. And we are allowed to use any value on the left-hand side of 4, including 4. So that's a closed circle. Now let's place the domain of the composition, which is all real numbers. If we look at this domain from left to right, notice that both domains are intersecting everywhere until we reach the value of 4. 
So now we can claim that the domain of the composition it is from negative infinity to positive 4, including 4. We're always looking at the overlapping domain. So we are done. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left. <laughs>